Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you one of the 50 million Americans covered by Social Security? If so, have you any clear idea of your rights and benefits under Social Security? Well, there may be a pleasant surprise in store for you. For in a few minutes, you'll learn from our sponsor the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, how easy it is to build social security into full security. Tonight's FBI file, The Sinister Shakedown. crimes are crimes of passion. For all crimes are committed for the gratification of some overwhelming selfish desire. Whether it be for profit, for revenge, for excitement, or for preservation against some threat of injury to pride, prejudice, or person. But not always is the person who commits a crime for one of these motives a criminal in the social sense of the word. Rather, as in tonight's case from the files of your FBI, he may be an otherwise wholly acceptable member of society who, in the face of some personal crisis, lacks the moral stamina to resolve it honorably and instead seeks a way out criminally. The business operations of the late industrialist Thomas J. Cortland had never engaged the interest of his family, except that they fully appreciated the financial security and the firm hold on a place in metropolitan society which Cortland's labors afforded them. But at this moment, three years after his death, something has happened which demands a belated interest in Cortland's transactions. Mrs. Cortland, his widow, has summoned her children, Beverly and Perry, to join her in the breakfast room. Beverly is first to enter. Oh, good morning, Mother. I'm afraid, my dear, it's anything but a good morning. Oh. Mother, you look as if you've seen a corpse on the living room rug. Well, that would scarcely be more serious than what has happened. Mm, what is it? Well, we'll wait for Perry. What on earth's the matter? Sit down, dear, and have your orange juice. Okay. Oh, good morning, all. Good morning, <clears throat> Perry. Oh, brother, dear, you look awful. Well, that's just how I feel. Oh, my head. <laughs> Has anybody got We a... have something more important than your head to worry about, Perry. Huh? At this very moment, our family is threatened with utter disgrace. What do you mean? It's blackmail, of course, sheer blackmail. And, blackmail? And I'm sure there's not a word of truth in it. Why, I just can't believe that your father would have committed such a thing. Father! But... Oh, what on earth are you talking about? This letter, it just came this morning. You read it, Perry. Okay, if I can see it. Uh, what does it say? <clears throat> uh, dear Mrs. Cortland, I have in my possession a document which would positively prove that your late husband, just before he died, was party to a transaction which netted him $500,000 that rightfully should have gone to his stockholders. I don't believe it. And unless you pay me 5000 at once, according to the instructions below, I shall place the document in the hands of the New York State Authority. Oh, let me warn you, if you report this to the police, someone in your family may turn up missing. Well, what do you think of that? Oh. Mother, what do we do? Well, I, I don't know. What do you think, Perry? Well, whether it's true or not, I, I don't think we can afford to take any chances. Well, what do you mean? In a time like this, we've got to look at it practically, and frankly, we're not sure that Dad didn't do it. Perry! Maybe he was in a jam, and... I had to do something like that to protect us. Oh, yes, but I don't... And if he did, gee, we can't afford to turn this letter over to the police. Oh, that that might start an investigation of your father's business dealings. Sure. Look, 
if we pay the five hundred thousand dollars, how, how do we know that that'll be the last? It's of better it? than to take a chance on that, than, rather than risk an investigation. Uh, well, what do you think, Mother? Well, I, I I say for the sake of all of us, and for the sake of Dad's name too, we we ought to pay off. But I don't like the idea of being blackmailed. Neither do I. And what are we going to do? Well, I'm I'm going to think about it a little more before I do anything. Yeah? Are you Mr. Roberts, the private detective? That's right, Miss Cortland. But how did you know who I am? Well, let's see now. In this morning's picture in the paper, you were sitting behind bottles and glasses at the Mercury Club. Two mornings ago, it was a shot at the vet's hospital. That was yesterday. Well, then it must have been the one with you at the dog show. Yes. I liked them all. You're a good-looking kid. Thanks. Mr. Roberts... I know, I know. You didn't come here to invite me to your charity ball next week. Maybe you'd, uh, you'd better close that door. Oh. Now, come on over and sit down. Thank you. Well, I hope it's you who's in trouble, Miss Cortland, because I'd love to get you out of trouble. Maybe I've made a mistake in coming to you. Okay. There's a door. Oh, wait. What I mean is, I've read in the papers about some of the cases you've worked on, but I... Uh... You mean, have I ever worked for people like you before? Well... And I... you want references to prove it. Well, I would like to know... Would you like for me to give you for a reference sometime? Of course not. Okay. Remember, you came to me. I didn't send for you. I know. But you must promise me one thing. I don't thing. promise anything but good service. I insist that absolutely nothing must get into the papers about this. Now, look, Miss Cortland. The cheap cases get me all the publicity I need to get the society cases that pay me enough not to have to talk about them. Very well, then. Yeah. Now, what is it, a blackmail letter? How did you know there was a letter? Well, it nearly jumped out of your bag when you went for a cigarette a minute ago. Oh. It is a blackmail letter. But I, I've got to return it before Mother knows I took it. Okay, then. We're losing time. Give me the story. A few hours later, in the office of John Ames, an assistant to the agent in charge of the New York office of the FBI... I want to assure you, Mrs. Cortland, you've done the only proper thing in reporting this matter to the FBI. But you understand why I hesitated. My son and daughter don't know yet that I've taken this course. But they were opposed to it? Oh, well, only because of the risk of... of an investigation in the business affairs of my late husband. Oh? Well, you can see that it would be disastrous for us if there's any truth in it. But, well, I'd... I'd rather it should be known than to have it on my conscience that I was paying a blackmailer to suppress it. Well, I'd like to say, if I may, Mrs. Cortland, I admire your courage and your moral sense of responsibility. Well, it's... Is the only right way for me to look at it. Oh, yes, of course. But as for the risk of an investigation, whether there would be any valid ground for it or not, all the Bureau can be concerned with in this case is the threat of kidnapping. Oh? Yes, you see, Mrs. Cotton, only an officer or a stockholder in your late husband's firm or some civil authority could institute such an investigation. But, well, what of the person who wrote the letter... Well, you surely don't think the would-be extortioner is an officer or a stockholder. Oh, no, no, of course not, but... Well, he, he claims to have documentary evidence. Well, it remains to be seen whether there is such a document. And if there is? What would you want to do about it? Well, I'd... I'd want to make everything right, of course. Well, then we have only one thing to worry about. Catching the writer of that letter. Now, then, uh, what do you wish me to do? Well, nothing for the moment. Just leave the letter with us for examination. Yes? And we'll get in touch with you the minute that it is necessary. But uh, what shall I tell them? Your son and your daughter? Yes. Just tell them that it's now in the hands of the FBI. Mr. 
Good evening, Miss Cortland. Hello, Ralph. Here you are, driver. Is my brother in the club, Ralph? I haven't seen him this evening, Miss Cortland. Well, if he comes, don't tell him I'm here. Very well. Good evening, Miss Cortland. Why did you have me meet you here, Mr. Roberts? Well, the meeting was your idea. But the 7-Eleven Club was your idea. Well, I thought you'd be more at home in a nightclub. Why did you have to pick this one? Well, I had to come over here anyway. What's wrong with it? This is my brother's favorite hangout. Oh, yes, that's right. I've read that in the columns. And I certainly don't want him to see me talking to now, you. Now, please sit down. If your brother should happen in and see us, you don't have to scream out that I'm a private detective, do you? I'm sorry. Do uh, you have a gold key here, too? What do you mean? I mean, a key that lets you into the, uh, the gambling room. Oh, oh, no, why? Well, I thought since your brother has... One. I didn't meet you to talk about my brother. Okay. What are you drinking? Nothing. If you came to talk about the case, I haven't got anything to report you. That's all right, but we've got to work faster than ever now. Why? Mother turned it over to the FBI today. That's where it belonged in the first place. How did they get hold of that document about my father? I don't believe there is any documents. But what if there is? I'm working for you. I'd have to turn it over to you if I got it. Oh, then please, you've got to get it. <laughs> okay. I'd better be going now. Oh, when will I see you again? Come to my office tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Why 3 o'clock? Because I think I'll have had an appointment just before then with the extortioner. <laughs> Come in, Mrs. Cotton. Thank you. I came as soon as I could, Mr. Ames. Have you found out something? Well, we examined the extortion letter first for fingerprints. Oh, but so so many of us handled the letter. But yes. As we found no prints which we could identify with those of any known criminal. I see. But on checking the watermark of the paper itself, yes. we were able to trace it to the store in the city which handled it exclusively. Rainers. Rainer. Yes, and we were able to get a list of the customers who purchased that particular paper. Oh? Here's the list. Mm -hmm. Now, do you recognize the names of any of them? Well, well, good heavens, there's my name. Then you do use this kind of paper? Oh, well, yes, it, it looks very much like it, but... Oh, I, uh, I'm sure it's only coincidence. Oh, but of course, I, I, I have my monogram. Well, you must get some of it plain, say, for second pages. Yes, but heavens, Mr. Ames, you're not implying that... Oh, I, I repeat, it could only be coincidence. Well, I guess that will be all for now, and thanks very much for coming in. We'll call you if anything further develops. Oh, yes. Yes, all right. Well, this way, please, Mrs. Gordon. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Monroe? Monroe? Yes, Mr. Ames? Did you hear my conversation with Mrs. Cortland? Yes. Well, I think we'd better start checking on the Cortland servants and on the private lives of his son and daughter, too. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Cortland. How did you know me? <laughs> the business I'm in. You're, uh, Lou Roberts? That's right. Look, <clears throat> I don't know what this is all about. Well, that's why I asked you to come here. Sit down. I'm afraid I haven't got time. I haven't got much either. Well, then get to the point. Well, I'll start with the singer at the 7-Eleven Club. What about her? She's worried about you, Cortland. She's what? She's worried about the spot you're in. What are you talking about? Oh, the 2500 bucks you owe the house and gambling losses. So what about it? They gave you a week to get it up. Right? Well, did they appoint you to collect? Nope. Then what's your angle in it? My angle is that you picked a risky way to raise the dough. What? But of course you're asking for 5000 what? what do you mean by that? The extortion letter you wrote your mother. Look here, Roberts. Are you trying to... Well... How do you know about any extortion letter? Why? Who hired you? Client. My sister, I'll bet. I just said it was a client. Uh huh. Well, what makes you think I wrote that letter? Because a Welcher will do anything to get up the dough when the heat's on him. And if I told the FBI the heat's on you, they could put two and two together just like I did. But you're not going to tell them. Oh, I'm not if you come clean. 
You're not even going to tell my sister that you suspect me. You're not going to tell anybody anything. Cortland, put down the gun. Turn in just a moment to tonight's case, which shows how your FBI helps provide national security. And now let's listen in on a conversation about social security between a man named Fred Boyd and his friend, the Equitable Society representative. I don't get it. You're a life insurance man, yet you say social security is a swell thing. Doesn't social security sort of take the place of life insurance? No, Fred. We Equitable Society representatives look on social security and life insurance as a team. They both pull together. What do you mean? Well, for the first time, the man of average salary has a chance to retire on an income that will enable him to enjoy a good standard of living. Social security will give him part of the income he needs. And life insurance can provide the rest. The two of them dovetail together perfectly. Say, that's a new angle. You start with Social Security as the foundation and then build on top of that, huh? Yes, many Americans have never discovered how easy it is to build Social Security into full security through life insurance. Most people are amazed when they discover how little it costs. For instance, if you already own some life insurance, your Equitable Society man may be able to show you how only a few dollars extra per month will give your wife complete protection and assure you a comfortable retirement income through the equitable extended income plan. Remember, your Social Security benefits vary according to your age, salary, and family situation. So why not get the facts? Find out exactly what you're entitled to under Social Security. The government has prepared a special card that will help you secure this information. To obtain one of these cards, Get in touch with your Equitable Society representative or send your name and address on a postcard to the Equitable Society care of the station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file... The Sinister Shakedown. Someone once said that the trouble with lying is you have to keep telling other lies to cover up the previous one. And pretty soon you're trapped in your own web of deceit. Likewise, the person who commits a crime and then commits another in an effort to conceal the first is only weaving another strand in the net that must inevitably close in upon him. It was not more than 15 minutes after Perry Cortland had shot down the private detective Lou Roberts and fled from the office that Beverly Cortland started up the same flight of stairs to keep her appointment with Roberts. Operator, get me the FBI. (laughs) 
Naturally, Miss Cortland, we're wondering how you happened to come here to Mr. Roberts' office. Oh, it was about the extortion letter. Before Mother turned it over to you, I... I secretly hired Mr. Roberts to work on the case. Oh, I see. I realized it was the wrong thing to do, well, but... I think I understand why. Thank you. And when you arrived this time and found the body... I started to leave, but... I thought I'd better come back and call you. Why? If somebody had seen me come here, I... I might have been suspected of having something to do with it if I ran away. But why did you call the FBI and not the police? I guess because the FBI was on my mind anyway in connection with the letter. You think there might be some connection between the letter and Robert's killing? How would I know? Hmm. Well, all. Yes? Did you find anything? Well, according to his files, the, the only case Roberts was working on at this time was the Cortland case. All the others seem to be closed. Well, that makes it look like there's some connection anyway. Yeah. Well, Miss Cortland. Yes? How far had Mr. Roberts gotten with this case? Well, all I know is he told me to come here at 3 o'clock this afternoon because he... Yes? Uh, because he thought he might have some news. I see. And, Roy, you better call the police. Right. The police? But do I have to... I think they'll permit us to follow through on this, Miss Cortland, since there might be a connection with the threatening letter. Oh. Now, you drive on home if you will. Tell your mother to meet me at our office in an hour. Yes. Yes, all right. Thank you very much. What are you thinking, Mr. Ames? Well, I'm thinking that Miss Cortland got here a little too late for a real shock. How's that? I'm afraid Roberts beat us to it in finding out about Perry Cortland's gambling debt at the 7-Eleven Club. Cortland? Look, uh, I told you I got the money for you, didn't I? I just wanted to remind you, your time is up tomorrow night. All right, all, all right, I'll have it by then. Just be sure you do. Okay, stop worrying, will you? I'm not the one that's worrying. So long, Cortland. <laughs> Come right in, please, Mrs. Cortland. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, Mr. Ames. Oh, what's the trouble? This, a second letter. When did you receive this? This afternoon, special delivery. Here. Thank you. Gives you one more chance to pay. Mm. And whoever it is knows the FBI is working on it. Yes, I see his warning about calling us off. It's rather foolish of him to admit knowing that we are on the case, since so few know it. Well, what do you mean? We have good reason to believe that this is the work of someone in your own household. Oh, good heavens, but... But who do you think... We can't afford to think. We've got to make sure. Yes, of course. Let's see. According to instructions, the money must be left in the side pocket of a car that will be parked at the northeast corner of 47th 3rd Avenue tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. Yes. All right, we'll see to it that the money is there. Yes, but... Say nothing to anyone in your household about bringing us this second letter. All right. Just tell them all that you have decided the best thing to do is to pay off. Perry? Perry? I'm in a hurry, Bev. I've got to see you, Perry. It's very important. What? What's the matter? Step in here in the library. Okay. Well? Oh, Perry, darling. Why did you do it? What are you talking about? I... I know the truth. What? I've known it since yesterday, but... I was too shocked to think clearly about it, and I... Look, Bev, what is this? Perry, you wrote that extortion letter, and you... You killed Lou Roberts, too. Now, wait a minute. I tore it off his calendar pad before the FBI got there. Tore what off? I had an appointment with him at 3 o'clock. And he told me he was meeting an extortioner just before then. Perry, your name was written down for 2.30. Well, so what if it was? That he was mean... shot three times, Perry. Yeah, I but... I found the pistol in your room. Three bullets had been fired. Okay. Oh. Perry, darling. Never mind, that's tough. 
Why did you do it? I was in a jam. It's awful. Ah, cut the crying, will you? Harry. Harry, you've got to give yourself up. Are you kidding? But you'll be found out. Oh, no, I won't. I've already collected the money. The extortion? Call it anything you want. I'm using it to get away in right now. Oh, no, Harry. Let go of me. Oh, but you can't go. I'm warning you. Bev, let go. No. Okay. Oh, Harry, my arm. You're not going to squeal on me. Please, please, you're hurting me. I'm going to keep you quiet. Oh, no. No, Harry, please. What? Huh? Oh, it's the FBI. I don't believe your brother is medicine, Miss Cortland. What are you doing here? That extortion money that was left by your mother had fluorescent powder on it. What? We'd like to see how your hands will look under the proper kind of light. In view of the more serious crime of murder, the FBI turned Perry Cortland over to the state. He was later tried and sentenced to be electrocuted. No, not always is the person who commits a crime a criminal in the social sense of the word. Rather, he may be an otherwise acceptable member of society who, in the face of some personal crisis, lacks the moral stamina to resolve it honorably, and instead seeks his way out criminally. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's colorful story from the files of your FBI. But now, friends, let me remind you that no matter how much you earn, you have a valuable asset in Social Security. And your Equitable Society representative will gladly show you how easy it is to build your Social Security into full security. He'll explain to you how Social Security and life insurance can work together for your complete protection and will help you determine exactly where you stand under Social Security. No obligation, of course. Phone him tomorrow. Your Equitable Society representative is listed in your local phone book under the name Equitable. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Death in the Tropics. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlson. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. Now, this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Death in the Tropics. On this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>